Hey guys, it's Jonah here and I'm back this time. I'm back with a homebrew review, damn it. <laughs> Been a while since I've done one of these. Um, and I'm not brewing so much as I used to, to be honest, but I am kind of trying to save up for one of these all-in-one brewing systems. Um, and it keeps changing. <laughs> um, I was thinking, well, originally I was thinking something like uh, a Hopcat or a Brewvolution. Brew Is that a thing? Brewvolution, brew Brewvolution. Um, and then I saw a G40 and I thought, oh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be cool. I was looking at a G30. Um, <laughs> and but now I there's the new wow what's the Australian one the Bruzella is it or something like that um and they've just had a new version come out so I'm, I'm looking at that oh my god decisions decisions the G40 is quite expensive um you're looking well over a grand um but for that type of thing it's got enough con connectivity uh to do to be the lazy man's kind of thing in fact my friend Jim who I, who I talk about a lot because he was my best bud I was talking to him about the um yeah the brevolution the brevolution brevolution I don't know what it's called and he went oh yeah that's the poor that's the poor man's grandfather and that I just started laughing I was like you cheeky fuck you're just saying that I don't have a grand or whatever um, but he was right at the time um, but I have got a little bit stashed away somewhere. Um, so I could do that, but I'm now looking at these Australian ones and thinking they've got a lot more cool things going on with them, especially because, well, what I'm thinking is, especially because I'm doing um, smaller batches. So I'm only usually doing a maximum of like three gallons at a time, uh, just because of volume. Um, and something that can go down to sort of 10, 10 litre um, or 15, somewhere, maybe 13, somewhere around that level um, would be absolutely perfect. Um, however, I can do up to five gallon if I want to. Um, but yeah. Wow. Anyway. Leads on to this beer. So I have had a few of these and look at this bad boy. Oh. Oh, yeah, there's no labels. Label out, damn it. <laughs> we used to say that um, Bobby Meyer, um, shum on to you, Bobby. Um, I still remember. Uh, but look, oh, it's a Cooper's. It even says Cooper's homebrew on the cap there. So it must be a homebrew. But look at that. I've got it in a two litre bad boy, which fits in the normal fridge because I might be too lazy to go out to the shed, which is where the brewing fridge is. But when I'm not brewing, I can, uh, yeah, I can temperature control my actual beer, which is cool. So I can do some conditioning and stuff. Um, however, if I do get a brewing system, one of these all in one bad boys, I've got a feeling that I'll be doing a lot of brewing, right? Yeah, we've definitely got a hiss. And I have had some of these beers before, but I've not had, obviously I haven't tapped this one before. Look at that, fill right up to the top. Right, and we've got me tasting glass. So let me go for a nice pour. Oh, slightly off camera, but never mind. So long as I don't get any major sedimenta in there, I am not too bothered. Whoa. There we go. Not so much on the head, which is a bit of a shame. Let me put that down. Ooh. Get this cap back on. because This is going back in the fridge. Because once you pour, that's the problem. Once you pour one, the sediment, which you probably can see down here, when you tip it over and pour a beer, the sediment gets mixed up. And I know what that is, because I made this all myself so i'm not too worried um but yeah maybe i'll do another 
review and put it in a nucleated glass. But anyway, this is Libya, which is a, uh, it's a pale ale. Look at that. Absolutely fantastic. It's a pale ale. Um, the hops in there are Goldings uh, for Bittering. East Kent Goldings, of course. Um, and then, and then, um, Centennial. And maybe a tiny, tiny wee bit of, what was it in there? Uh, was it Simcoe as well? Might have been Simcoe. Uh, can't remember, but the hops I used were ancient hops. We're talking at least five years old, but they've been in the freezer, so you never know. But I, I, I didn't use them for dry hopping. Centennial, I bought some new, I bought actually hop tea bags um, from Get A Brood, actually. If you're in the UK or Ireland, uh, Get A Brood uh, is, yeah, really good place to get your stuff from. And... Centennial, Super Cascade, as they used to call it, is probably my favourite hop uh, to dry hop. It is a dual hop. You can use it for bittering, but I, I prefer other hops for bittering. And this works really well for dry hopping or whirlpooling. I, I can't really... Well, I can do whirlpooling, but I can't be bothered stirring it and all that shit. It doesn't make sense, really. Uh, but I used a uh, hop spider for this one. Oh, lovely. It has got a nice hot bitterness, actually. Uh, quite sharp. And a weird bit kind of zesty, a weird bit lemony, uh, which probably comes from the Goldings more than the Centennial, but maybe the Centennial gives, maybe it's a little bit of a citrus bite. Maybe that's what I'm getting. Um, if I remember, I dry hopped it with quite a lot of Centennial. I think I'll put, and considering it was, it was a small batch, it was only a, I think it was a 13 and a half, so a three gallon UK gallon batch. Um, <clears throat> wow, surprisingly carbonated for the amount of head on there. And look at that. I always go on about the tide line. There's a little one there. Man, I'm, I am happy. And I have had this beer before. I am getting, I have to be honest, I am getting a tiny bit of that kind of homebrewy tang thing going on. Uh, but the, the, the yeast I used for this was like three years old, maybe something like that. But it's an old yeast. Um, but overall nice, pretty nice. It is chilled down, I have to say. So maybe that is kind of disguising some of the flavor. I'm still trying to get um, the particles to drop out. Um, and I wasn't sure if it was going to explode or not, <laughs> which is really weird. So what I might do, if I'm going to do another review, I might do, I might not, um, is chill it down for a few days, then take it out of the fridge. <coughs> and now we're not in ridiculous summertime anymore. Um, it will settle down to a nice, Kind of even temperature, so that was 10, 15, main, maybe something like that. Uh, which is which is a nice, yeah, a nice place to get your beer to drop stuff out. And uh, because I've got a lot more headspace in there now, it's not going to explode, which is always a good sign, especially with homebrew. I've had some explosions before. So the other thing I should say is um, 
Oh, I've got two tide lines. That's cool. This doesn't have any oats in or, or wheat or any of that stuff. This is pure malt, uh, which is cool. Um, yeah, it hasn't got that metallic tang, but it's just got a sort of zesty, lemony kind of tang going on there. So, yeah, probably need to dial stuff in a little bit more. Um, and it's quite light. The, as, like I say, even though it's not a pale colour, this is a pale ale. Um, and uh, for people in the UK, you would probably describe this as a bitter. Um, because a pale ale, when you think about it in America, <laughs> wow, um, is not exactly the same thing in the UK. Uh, or, yeah, Britain, England, um, depending how jingoistic you are. Um, so colour-wise, it definitely looks like a pint of bitter, a pint of dishwater, as I would call it. And this is not far off a really nice pint of dishwater, but the colour is slightly darker um, than perhaps... Uh, the Americans would say, that's not a pale ale, that's too dark. Um, and you could, you could be right. But, um, yeah, nice bitter goes for a, a, a nice kind of nutty uh, malt. So we're talking Marisotta, but we're also talking, yeah, I can't remember exactly what was in here. A bit of crystal and maybe a touch of biscuit malt. Or something a little bit darker. Something like that. Anyway, I think I've not done too badly with this bad boy. Um, and it's in a tulip. It's in this tulip kind of thing. But uh, yeah, it's pretty. I mean, you can't. I don't think you can see me through here. But it is pretty clear. Look, if you look at the bubbles, there are still bubbles coming up. So it is. Definitely well carved, even if it's not giving you the um, that kind of head you might get on a yeah on a commercial beer. But then, like I say, it's not. It's very chilled down. <laughs> so with homebrew, the the longer you chill it down, the less kind of head retention you get and that kind of stuff. And like I said, I didn't put any wheat or oats or whatever, which again helps with the uh, the head retention. Whoa. Lovely, lovely jubbly. The bitterness is, hmm, it tastes quite light. And, and I'm pretty sure if I remember, because obviously there's no label on that bottle at all. Um, and I didn't take, I have to say, I didn't take as many readings as perhaps I should have done. Um, to replicate and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not too bothered about that. Um, I think it's probably about three and a half, four percent. It's quite a light bit, even though it's dark. It's quite light, um, which is quite nice because you get you get the flavours through, and and the the centennial is definitely coming through. Um, I am getting that lemony zesty thing, which yeah, I don't know if I should be getting really. Um, Centennial is more, I always call it bubble gum, but it does have that kind of peachy, um, light grapefruit type. I mean, it is a bit zesty, but not superbly zesty. Um, and it's more on the nose it, than on the actual palate, so. Yeah, maybe that's there. Anyway, guys, I'm going to release this as a homebrew Wednesday because this is a homebrew, a homebrew review. Um, so I'm going to release it on Wednesday. Um, Shum on to you. Uncle Jonah is still doing homebrewing. So please don't think that just because I do a lot of beer reviewing, it does not mean that I'm not also homebrewing too. So shum on to you all. 
and we hopefully will have some home brewing stuff real soon but like I say not 100% sure when that's going to be but um, I am still doing a home brew every now and then home brew <laughs> I remember the days oh, yeah the home brewing days they were good <laughs> guys it's been Uncle Jonah um, please click like and subscribe and you'll get all my, uh, usually my bear rev beer reviews, bear reviews, wow, if I get naked it will be bear reviews, um, not doing that again, <laughs> ask Big Secure about my naked antics, Jesus Christ, <laughs> um, and we'll see you real soon for more drinking, but also more home brewing real soon, cheers to beers guys, and shamon.